The Story of the Green Jewel Sneferu was one day disconsolate and weary. He wandered about the palace with desire to be cheered, nor was there ought to be gloom from his mind. He caused his chief scribe to be brought before him, and he said, I would fain to have entertainment, but cannot find any in this place. The scribe said, Your Majesty should go boating on the lake and let the rowers be the prettiest girls in the harem. It will delight your heart to see them splashing the water where the birds dive and gaze upon the green shores and the flowers and the trees. I myself will go with you. The king consented and twenty virgins who were fair to behold went into the boat and they rowed with oars of ebony which were decorated with gold. His majesty took pleasure in the outing and the gloom passed from his heart as the boat went hither and thither. The girls sang together with sweet voices. It chanced as they were turning round, an oar handle brushed against the hair of a girl who was staring, and it shook from it a green jewel which fell into the water. She lifted up her oar and stopped singing, and the others grew silent and ceased rowing. Said Sneferu, do not pause, let us go on still further, the girl said. She who steers has lifted her oar, said Sneferu to her, why have you lifted your oar? Alas, I have lost my green jewel, she said. It has fallen into the lake, Sneferu said. I will give you another. Let's go on. The girl pouted and made answer. I would rather have my own green jewel again than any other. His majesty said to the chief scribe, I am given great enjoyment by this novelty. Indeed, my mind is much refreshed as the girls row me up and down the lake. Now one of them has lost her green jewel which has dropped into the water and she wants it back and she will not have another to replace it. <clears throat> the chief scribe at once muttered a spell and then by reason of his magic word the wa waters of the lake were divided like a lane. He went down and found the green jewel which the girl had lost and came back with it to her. When he did that, he again uttered my words of power, and the waters came together as they were before. The king was well pleased. Then he, he had full enjoyment with the rowing upon the lake. He returned to the palace. He gave gifts to the chief scribe, and everyone wondered at the marvel which had been accomplished. Such was Hafra's tale of the green jewel and King Hufus commanded that offerings should be laid on the tomb of Sneferu and his chief scribe, who was a great magician. Next, Prince Hadadeth stood before the king and he said, Your Majesty has heard tales regarding the wonders performed by magicians in other days, but I can bring forth a work of marvels, marvels who now lives in this kingdom, said Hufu, and who is he, my son? Jedi the magician, his name is Dedi, answered Prince Hadadef. He is a very old man, for his years are a hundred and ten. Each day he eats a joint of beef, five hundred loaves of bread, and five drinks, and drinks a hundred jugs of beer. He can smite off the head of a living creature and restore it again. He can make a lion follow him. He knows the secret of the habitation of the god Jehuti, which your majesty has desired to know so that you may design the chambers of your pyramid. King Hufu said, Go now and find for me this Hadadef. The prince went down to the Nile, boarded a boat and sailed southward until he reached the town called Dead Snefru, where Dedi had made his dwelling. He went ashore and he carried on his chair a step toward the magician who was found lying at his door. When Dedi was awakened, the king's son saluted him and bade him not to rise up because of his ears. The prince said, My royal father desires to honor you and will provide you with a tomb among your people. 
They did bless the prince and the king with thankfulness, and he said to Hadadef, Greatness be to you, to your car. You have victory over the powers of evil. May your who follow the path which leads to paradise. Hadadef assisted Dedi to rise up and took his arms to help him towards the ship. He sailed away with the prince, and in another ship were his assistants and magic books. <clears throat> Health and strength be plenty. Health and strength and plenty be, be yours, said Hadadef when he stood before his royal father, King Khufu. I have come downstream with Dedi the great magician. His majesty was well pleased and said, Let the man be brought into my presence. Dedi came and saluted the king who said, Why have I not seen you before? That is, he that is called comes, answered the old man. You have sent for me and I am here. It is told, King Hufu said, that you can restore the head that is taken from a live creature. It can indeed, your majesty, answered Daddy. The king said, then let a prisoner be brought forth and decapitated. I would rather it were not a man, said Daddy. I do not deal even with cattle in, in such a manner. A duck was brought forth, and its head was cut, and the head was thrown to the right, the body to the left. Daddy spoke magic words, and the head and the body came together, and the duck rose up and quacked loudly. The same was done with the goose. King Hufu then caused a cow to be brought in, and its head was cut off. Daddy restored the animal to life again and caused it to follow him. His majesty then spoke to the magician and said, it is told that you possess the secrets of the dwelling of the god Jehuti. Daddy answered, I do not possess them, but I know where they are concealed and what is written within and, and what is within a temple chamber at the city of the sun. This is On or Heliopolis or Anu. <clears throat> there the plans are kept in a box, but it is no insignificant person who shall bring them to you, Your Majesty. I would fain to know who delivered them to me. King Hufu said, Dedi prophesied that three sons would be born to Rud Dedit, wife of the chief priest of Ra. The elders would become the chief priest of the city of the sun and would possess the plants. He and his brothers would one day sit upon the throne and rule all over, the, over all the land. King Hufu, heart was filled with gloom and alert when he heard the prophetic word of the great magician. Daddy then said, What are your thoughts, O king? Behold, your son will reign after you and then his son, but next one of these children will follow. King Hufu was silent. Then he spoke and asked, When shall these children be born? Daddy informed his majesty who said, I will visit the temple of Ra at that time. Daddy was honored by his majesty and there afterwards dwelt in the house of the prince Hodadef, who was given, he was given daily his portion of an ox, a thousand loaves of bread, a hundred jugs of beer and a hundred bunches of onion. Bath of royal children. The day came when the sons of the woman Ruth the Dit were to be born, and then the high priest of Ra, her husband, prayed for the goddess Auset or Isis, and her sister Nephthys or Nef Nef Nephthys to Meshet. This is Sehmet or another aspect of Sehmet. Sehmet is uh, yeah, the, the, you, you learn about him. You just do your research. Meshet goddess of birth, to the frog goddess Hect, and to the creator Hunumu. Hunumu was the one who was that on his uh, wheel, spinning wheel, making, uh, joining the body parts of man. This is why he's here. Who gives the breath of life that there. Then he entreated to have the care of the three babies who had become the king of Hem, one, uh, who were to become the king of Hem, one after the no another. One after the other. The deities had him, then came the goddess as dancing girls who were about the land. 
and the God whom followed them on their burden as their burden bearer. When they reached the door of the high priest's dwelling, they danced before him. He entreated them to enter, and they did according to his desire, and shut themselves in the room with the woman ready to date. So this is a woman who was to have three babies who were to become the kings of Hem, who then prayed to the goddesses, right, or to the gods or to the spirits. So they appeared as dancing girls and a garden bearer. When they reached the door of the high priest dwelling, they danced before him, who entreated them to enter without knowing these were the entities that he had prayed to. And then they entered and shut the door with the woman who they did. Oset called the first child who was born Yusakaf. 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 Isaka. Yusaka, Isaka. Ah, okay, Yusakaf. And said, Let no evil be done to him. The goddess Meshet prophesied that this would be, become the king of Hem, Honumu. The God creator gave the child strength. The second was named Sahura, Sahura by the goddess Auset. Meshet prophesied that he would also he would also become a king. Numa gave him strength. The third was the third was named Kaka. So we have Yusakaf, Sahura, Kaka. Meshet said he shall also be a king. Numa gave him strength. Here the dancing girls took to their departure the high priest gave a measure of barley to their burden bearer and Hunumu carried it upon his shoulder. They all went upon their way and Auset said, Now let us work our wonders on behalf of these children so that their father may know who have sent us to his house. Royal crowns were fashioned and concealed in the measure of barley which was given them. Then the deities caused a great storm to arise, and in the midst of it they returned to the dwelling of the high priest. And they put the barley in a cellar and sealed it, saying they would return again to take it away. It came to pass that after fourteen days, this is two weeks, fourteen days a fortnight, Ru did it, bade her servant to bring barley from the cellar so that Beer might be made. The girl said, There's none left save the measure which was given to the dancing girls. So this is two weeks after the children have been born. Bring to them. Bring that then, said Rude did. And the dancing girls, when the dancing girls return, I will give them its value. When the servants entered the cellar, she heard the low sound of sweet music and dancing and song. She went and told her mistress of this wonder. And Rude did enter the cellar, and at first did not discover whence the mysterious sound issued from. At, at length she placed her ear against the sack which contained the barley given to the dancing girls, and found that the music was within it. She at once placed the sack in a chest and locked it, and then told her husband, and they rejoiced together. Now it would happen that one day Rude did was angry with her servant and smote her heavily. The girl vowed that she would she would be avenged and said, Her three children will become kings. I will inform King Hufu of this matter. So the servant went away and visited her uncle, who was the mother's eldest brother. So this was basically a young girl who was given away to go assist her cousin or something of that sort, because she went to visit her uncle, who was her mother's eldest brother. She To him, she told all that had happened and all she knew regarding the children of her mistress. She was angry with her and spoke, saying, Why come to me with this secret? I cannot consent to make it known as you desire. Then he struck the girl who went afterwards to draw water from the Nile. On the bank, a crocodile seized her and she was devoured. The man who who then went towards to the dwelling of Rudedit, he found her mourning with her head upon her knees. He spoke, saying, What is your heart? Why is your heart full of gloom? Rudedit answered, Because my servant girl went away to reveal my secret. The man bowed and said, Behold, I have come to 
Behold, she came to me and told me, but I struck her, and she went towards the river and was seized by a crocodile. So was the danger averted. Nor did King Hufu ever discover the babies regarding whom Daddy had prophesied. In, in time, they sat upon the throne of him, as already been prophesied.